My name is Melinda Whitaker, and this presentation is on feline dermatophytosis. Feline dermatophytosis, or ringworm, is a highly contagious fungal infection of the hair, skin, and nails of people and animals. It is the most common infectious skin disease of cats and is likely the most common contagion of small animals. Lesions are easily recognized by areas of hair loss. These are often rounded and are present on the face, tail, and lower limbs. The hair shafts are easily epilated and the hair breaks off at the skin due to damage of the hair shaft. If left untreated, most immunocompetent animals eventually eliminate the infection. Dermatophytosis can occur in any age animal, but it is most commonly seen in young, old, and debilitated animals. Ringworm is most common in tropical and temperate climates and in warm weather months. Tropical areas are seen on the map in red and temperate areas in green. Infective spores are deposited on the skin and coat after contact with an infected animal, an infected environment, or fomite. Once on the coat, spores reach the skin and hair follicles. Spores can't penetrate healthy skin, so some type of microtrauma is needed to facilitate infection. Infection requires a source of exposure, compromised defenses, increased warmth and humidity, and microtrauma. Microtrauma. Fleas are a common source of microtrauma. Microsporum canis, microsporum gypsum, and trichophyton mentagrophytes are the most common causes of ringworm in animals. Here I've included some pictures of the microspores as seen on a uh, microscopic slide. And this is M. canis. This one is M. gypsum, and you can tell the difference in that M. canis has a much wider uh, area, kind of wall, when you look at it on the, um, on the spore than M. gypsum. There's also more divisions on M. canis than there are on M. gypsum. And then trichophyton, when you see that on the microscope, it tends to have a lot more um, microconidia, so you've got a lot of little clusters. Here we have some pictures that show the most common ways that microsporum canis, microsporum gypsum, and trichophyton mentagrophytes are contracted. This picture shows microsporum canis is commonly contracted through contact with an infected animal or the environment. Microsporum gypsum is often contracted through contaminated soil. And then trichophyton mentagrophytes is contracted mainly from exposure to rodent nest. Ringworm can persist in the environment for months or even years, and it can be spread on grooming implements, contaminated toys or bedding, and by humans on our clothing and hands. In nature, the incubation period for ringworm is anywhere between four days and four weeks. Apple green fluorescence using a woods lamp is a common way to screen for ringworm. However, not all dermatophytes fluoresce in this manner, and in reality, the only clinically significant one in veterinary medicine that does so is microsporum canis, and not all strains of microsporum canis glow. We really don't know which strains of microsporum canis glow or what factors influence the development of this fluorescence. Uh, Battery-operated woods lamps are not effective to screen for a wingworm, and if this is going to be a screening method, then the shelter should have a good quality woods lamp that plugs in. I've included here a picture of our woods lamp at the shelter where I work and then this is a picture showing that apple green fluorescence on a cat using a woods lamp. Another way to diagnose ringworm in an animal with patches of hair loss is to pluck hair shafts and directly examine these shafts under a microscope. These are called trichograms. This test doesn't tend to be real cost effective in shelter situations though because dogs and cats have real dense hair coats that can make finding the lesions quite difficult. If the lesions are found, you can pluck wood positive hairs and then examine them under the microscope and you can see spores on the hair shafts like we see here. Um, and then you can also see the fungus growing on this hair shaft.
fungal culture is the diagnostic test of choice for animal shelters, and we use two techniques to get our samples. The toothbrush technique is recommended for culturing cats and for individual lesions. A toothbrush is used to brush the lesion or the coat 30 times, and debris from the surface of the skin is collected. And then the other technique that can be used is hair plucking. The hair plucking technique can be problematic, though, because if the hairs plucked don't have the fungus growing on them, then the culture will be falsely negative. False positives do occur with dermatophyte medium or DTM cultures, and it's very easy to cross-contaminate the plates. When sampling the patient using a toothbrush, the sampler should be sure to brush the face and ears last, since these are most common uh, areas that we see ringworm. Um, the location where the plates are inoculated can affect the cultures, since airborne spores can be present. So if you inoculate the plates in the ringworm isolation area, then you could potentially cause a false positive. The plates that are used for culture should be at least three times as large as the head of the toothbrush for optimum growth. And the glass fungal cultures are not recommended, since not only is it difficult to inoculate the medium, if the culture is positive, it's very difficult to obtain a sample to identify the pathogen. I have included a picture here that shows growth on one that is not ringworm and then growth on another one that is positive for ringworm. Um, however, these certainly are not the recommended way. Um, once the cultures are obtained, they should be kept in a warm location and keeping them in the dark can help keep them from drying out. Once the culture is positive, the pathogen should be identified. And the things that you need to remember when looking at fungal cultures are the pathogens are pale or buff in color, the plates should be examined daily, and the DTM should start to change color to red as the pathogen grows. In most cases, microscopic Sporum gypsum grows in 7 to 14 days. However, trichophyton can take up to 21 days to grow. With cultures, it is most important to remember that that red color change on the DTM is not diagnostic for pathogen. Uh, if you have black colonies or slimy colonies, they're not ringworm. These are typically mold contamination. This slide shows some positive DTM fungal cultures. Uh, this plate is a microsporum positive DTM, and then this plate is a trichophyton positive DTM. And as you can see, the microsporum are kind of buff, beigey colored colonies that look sort of fluffy, and then the trichophyton colonies are white, and they are quite fluffy looking. This slide shows microscopic identification of fungal spores. Uh, the picture on the left are some trichophyton spores that I uh, diagnosed from one of my shelter kittens. And then on the right are some um, microsporum spores seen. Uh, I got this picture from Wikipedia because I couldn't find a good picture on one of my kittens. The most effective treatment for ringworm positive animals is a combination of topical and systemic therapy. Cost effective topical agents include lime sulfur dips or myconazole baths. These should be performed twice a week and are most effective when coupled with 21 to 28 days of systemic antifungal therapy. Terbenafine is a cost effective option and we use it at a dose of 10 mg per keg by mouth once a day for 21 continuous days. We have our terbenafine compounded by Roadrunner Pharmacy in Arizona. At our shelter, technicians medicate and dip the kittens. To monitor therapy, weekly fungal cultures are performed and the treatment endpoint is two negative fungal cultures a week apart. Kittens with isolated lesions can also be treated with topical terbenafine, uh, as seen in the picture of the Lamisil. And in foster care, if the foster is able to apply topical terbenafine and you've used lime sulfur dips appropriately, then they can also treat isolated lesions. At my shelter, kittens are treated for ringworm. I've included a picture of three of our cats that have been undergoing treatment recently. Uh, we have been able to keep some kittens from our kitten nursery for as long as 10 weeks of treatment. Kittens undergoing therapy for ringworm should be kept in an isolated area to avoid infection of the general population. Cages should be cleaned using a disinfectant against ringworm.
Most common shelter disinfectants are effective against ringworm with the exception of calcium hypochlorite and they require a variety of contact times to be effective. Accelerated hydrogen peroxide or rescue is effective at a 1 to 16 dilution when left on for 5 minutes of contact time. Potassium peroxymonosulfate, quaternary ammonium compounds and regular household bleach are all effective disinfectants for ringworm when they're left in place for 10 minutes of contact time. The environment can be monitored for ringworm by using Swiffer cloths to clean an area and inoculating culture media with those cloths. I've included here a picture of the ASPCA Shelter Disinfectant Quick Reference Guide and as you can see this column here says effective against ringworm following pre-cleaning and it shows that all except calcium hypochlorite are effective against ringworm at the appropriate contact time. Animal shelters struggle with treating animals with ringworm for several reasons. These include protecting humans, the staff, as well as the public, and other animals, as well as the length of time needed for diagnosis and treatment. Ringworm is easily spread on fomites, which include our clothes, equipment, and ourselves, and in the air. In some cases, ringworm lesions can develop post-adoption. These are problematic because it can make it seem as if the animal shelter is adopting out sick animals. Ringworm lesions that do develop post-adoption can result in lowered adoption rates and decreases in funding because of the perception that the shelter is doing something wrong. Some shelters practice a recognize and euthanize policy for ringworm because of the risk of transmission, the negative public opinion, and the expense of treating the condition. The animals that I've considered cured of ringworm have been adopted with no further issues. We do not allow the kittens to leave prior to a cure, and we do notify our adopters of their medical history. Once the animals are cleared, there should not be any need for further medications. I've included here a picture of several of my foster kittens, and none of these guys have had ringworm, but I think they're cute, so I included the picture. This is a list of my sources that I used for this presentation. Some of them are from pictures and some of them are from the text.